The following slides are shared with us from Robert Matthews' collection of Potter's American Monthly, 1878. The first slide is Anthony's Point, which is located on the New York mainland. This 30-acre property was owned by E. Anthony. Later, it was known as Point Marguerite and today is known as Pine Tree Point. E. Anthony and his brother Henry, better known as H.T., owned the largest manufacturer and distribution company of photographic supplies in the United States. An interesting scene, but I have absolutely no idea where Dick's Bay is located. Do you? This illustration is titled Dining Out. It looks like friends are having a potluck dinner, much like we have today. This two-acre island was purchased in the early 1870s by Ms. Sarah Frost of Watertown, New York. I mention this for a reason. Property bought early on was nameless, giving the first buyer the privilege of naming his or her acquisition. A lot of property ended up with family names like Anthony's Point, Pullman Islands, and yes, Frost Island. The scene shows a fishing guide with his two clients. The lady is standing up to show off her catch, most likely a muskie. There's a story to go along with this illustration. Camping out in the Thousand Islands was very popular at the time. Hundreds, if not thousands, camped out during the summer months. Most did not bring their camping equipment with them. They rented it, everything from boats to stoves to tents. Tents large enough for half a dozen people rented out for $3 a week. This is Isle of Pines, a three-acre island located between Thousand Island Park and Fisher's Landing. The island is still known by that name. This scene shows the entrance to the Lake of the Isles, which separates U.S. Wellesley Island in the U.S. and Hill Island in Canada. An illustration by today's artist would show dozens of speedboats anchored on a sunny afternoon in August. Don't you love the way men and women dressed in those days? So proper. Today, this 10-acre island is called Iroquois Island and is located a couple of miles downriver from Alexandria Bay. In the mid-1870s, Manhattan Island was owned by Judge J.C. Spencer of New York City. The original cottage on this island was built many years ago and is purported to be the first summer home in the Thousand Islands. At that time, it was occupied by Seth Green, a famous fishing enthusiast. This island still goes by the name Nobby Island. Henry Heath and a Mr. Goodwin erected the first cottage on the island in 1873. Over the years, Heath convinced many of his friends to join him on the river during the summer months. Many purchased islands of their own. Before the hotels and large cottages, people socialized in the great outdoors. This scene shows good friends getting together at a picnic. Pullman Island was purchased in 1864 from Cornwall and Walton. The cottage was built the same year by George Pullman, developer of the Pullman sleeping car. Pullman was an aggressive promoter of the Thousand Islands. He played host to a number of New York editors and 50 Southern editors in June 1872. These editors feasted, fished, took boat rides, and when they returned home, told their subscribers all about the wonders of the Thousand Islands. Two months later, the Pullman family entertained the President of the United States, General Ulysses S. Grant, along with 20 of his friends and family members. They must have enjoyed the islands as they stayed eight days. These two events put the Thousand Islands on the map and led to what is now known as the Rush of 72. People by the hundreds, maybe thousands, flocked to the Thousand Islands. They packed the hotels and boarding houses, stayed in private homes, and lived in tents on unoccupied islands. Finally, there was no more room, and many were sent back home. Thus began the Golden Age. It would last for another 40 years. This illustration of the Thousand Island House was a part of the article, but obviously is the work of another unknown artist. This picture first appeared in the July 11, 1873 issue of the Daily Graphic. One can only marvel that a hotel this size could be built in seven months during the winter of 1873 and be ready for the summer season. Tourism was exploding. Prosperity was everywhere. The Thousand Islands was on its way to becoming one of the most popular summer destinations in the world. 
almost overnight. Robert is our go to reference for Thousand Islands memorabilia. This video was made for the January 2013 edition of ThousandIslandsLife.com.